Max, let's go to the hotline and let's bring in the play-by-play -play voice of the only team in the state of Texas to have two wins over top 25 teams. He's also a Texas High School Football Hall of Famer. We are joined by Craig Way. Craig, I guess that Texas can't beat a ranked team this week, but it sure seems like they've, they've made a habit of it. Maybe that's the scary thing, Jeff. Maybe they need to play darn ranked teams. I don't know. If, they, if the Maryland game was any uh, indication, actually, they did beat an unranked in Tulsa after that. Mm -hmm. So uh, the main thing about them, I think, is maintaining the momentum. They've got a good feeling about where they are, about the work they put in. This was a big hay in the barn week because maybe this is a season of exercising demons. They were able to do that with TCU, hadn't beaten the Horned Frogs since 2013. Now they go to a place where they haven't won. Well, let me ask you this. Mm -hmm. what, what were you doing in the fall of 2002? 2002? Let's see. I would have been a very poor sophomore offensive lineman at Coppell. Okay, there you go. Yeah. Uh, and, and I was a very poor play-by-play -play broadcast. No, I, it was my first year of doing the play-by-play -play, uh, for Texas that year, O two. 2 That's the last time wow. that Texas won a game in Manhattan. Kansas. Although they haven't played there every year, obviously. Mm -hmm. In fact, I think they've played a grand total of seven times up there, going back to 1998. But they haven't won there since O two, 2 and that's the only time yeah. they've won there. So it, it's been a minute. It's been a house of horrors for them, but we'll see if the Longhorns can get it done up there in Manhattan uh, with a 2.30 kick. Is that right? That is correct. 2.30 kick, which will actually, I could guess I can kind of break this news to our audience, which will prevent you from being on High School Scoreboard Live on Friday night. Um, that is true. Because you'll have to be uh, hoofing it up to Manhattan. Um, we will miss you desperately, but more importantly, uh, Rick will, Rick will not only have one person to judge his puns on Friday night. Well, that's a good thing, I guess. And, and you know, uh, you know the, the the weird thing about that is, is that we've talked about this before. When I came back to doing the show, and I did it from '96, I guess through 2000 or '99, mm -hmm. right there. And I stepped away from it uh, for a couple of years, especially when I was going the first year of play-by-play -play for Texas. I wanted to make sure I was, you know, uh, it, that I had uh, had down everything I needed to do the routine for doing it. And then at the time, Mike and Aspasi, who was the executive producer, called me going into 2004. So I guess I'd been away from it three seasons, 01, 02, 03, and said, any way we can get you to come back and, and do at least some of the shows? I know you've got the – and I said, yeah, 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 I, I, things are pretty comfortable now. I know my routine. I can do that. He said, well, look at the schedule and see what you could do. So I looked at the schedule, and he called me back and said – how many of the uh, uh, 17 shows back then we do? How many of the 17 shows can you do? And I said, well, look, I took a real hard look at it, Mike. I said, I think I can do 14 for you. So 14? We thought you could do like maybe four or five. So, <laughs> you know, the old uh, Al Pacino line, you know, just when you think you're out, they pull you back in. So I love it, and, and that's why I still do it. And I think out of our 18 shows this year, I think uh, I'm probably doing 15 of them. So, uh, you know, that's, the, the, that's I, nice. I hate the ones that I have to miss, but occasionally you have to. Well, we will, we'll of course, keep you posted on all the things that happen in, in Texas high school football. I'm sure you'll have your finger on the pulse of it as well. But I do want to ask you about last week. Um, Obviously, the ones that jump out to, to you are, are Fort Ben Marshall's win over Manville, a, a few other mm -hmm. games. Um, besides those headliners, is there a game that, that, that now that you've thought about it and now that you've had time to digest it, uh, that you go, wow, that's, uh, that's something I did not expect? Well, I, you know, uh, you and I talked about this on the show on Monday. I don't think anybody is that incredibly worried about West Orange Stark. But they are one and three, and at some point you do draw a line about whether you rank a school or not. And and, and uh, in, in a week where uh, you can have two, two and two teams be ranked in a top ten with less than half the season uh, completed, you think about that for a moment, Tab. If you've got two teams with multiple losses and you haven't even played half the season yet, and they're still ranked, mm -hmm. that tells you something about the respect that the voters have for the poll, uh, have for a certain school. And and, and that might that's definitely the case for Stephenville. La Vega, maybe not quite as much, but we'll find out a little more about that this week for sure. We're talking with Craig Way, the Texas High School Football Hall of Famer here on Texas Football Today. Get involved in the conversation, hashtag TF Today. You know, one game that I feel like maybe we glossed over 
Uh, but and, and I I know that we I don't think we've mentioned it on the show this week, but I, I'm really interested in your thoughts. Is Converse Judson? Um, you know that that's a game that I know had kind of lost a little bit of its luster going into it. You know, Steele had taken a loss, and 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 it, you know maybe these aren't those kind of bona fide state championship containers that we were used to. But at the same time. I was the more I think about it, I think Judson's win over Steele is just as impressive as a lot of the other wins out there. I'm I'm interested in in now your thoughts on coming out of uh, Judson's win over Steele, uh, a game that you know as we mentioned in Palace of Horrors, Steele has pretty much dominated Judson since you know for for uh, pretty much their entire existence. Yeah, and, and you're right, and and I'll tell you another reason why it kind of slid under the radar for us, uh, and we're all kind of uh, victims of this from time to time. Judson was coming off an unintentional bye because mm-hmm. they'd had that stormed out game. I guess what Harlan's are never supposed to play and, and it didn't happen. So you had that. And so it, it became one of those out of sight, out of mind things. And I think everybody expected them to win the game over at steel, but to dominate the way, the way that they did, I think that's what took people the most by surprise. And it's like, take notes. They're for real. Mm-hmm. They're really good. We've been saying that from the start and the, and the rankings prove it as well. But they are really good, and that was just the latest statement from them. We also talked uh, – I know we talked with their head coach on on scoreboard. We were able to get him late uh, basically after their game finally ended. But we got Drew Sanders from Vandegrift uh, on, the, on the phone following their, their really gutty win over Hendrickson. Um, I mean, I guess my question is it, it kind of seems like it's, it's not all – it's not a, you know, a, 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 a path lined with, with sunshine and daffodils, but at the same time, they're kind of past the toughest part of their district schedule with wins over Cedar Ridge and, and Hendrickson. So, so my question is, how good is this Austin Vandegrift team, which now looks like it's in the catbird seat to finish the regular season undefeated? It's a great question, Tep, because when you play – the two teams that were the acknowledged favorites to win that district. Uh, Cedar Ridge was the state semifinalist a year ago and a two-time defending district champion. Hendrickson was a quarterfinalist whose last loss came at Cedar Ridge, and they were loaded, and they were off to that incredible start. Uh, I, I think everybody certainly expected it to be uh, those two vying for the district title. Vandegrift was looked at as being – the third or the fourth team out of that district. Yeah, they'll you know they'll, they'll get into the postseason as a runner-up, uh, probably in the D two bracket. But uh, but they're probably you know but th- th- that's the way they were looked at. And some of it had to do with the fact they'd be in, been in the district with Lake Travis and Westlake the prior two years, and were kind of viewed as an also ran there because Lake Travis and Westlake were the two headliners out of that. And Vandergrift hadn't beaten either one of those. They come close twice with Westlake, but hadn't beaten either one of those. So it was pretty natural for folks. To to expect that. But what Vandegrift is doing with its defense now is reminiscent of what Cedar Park, its neighbor and rival just a couple of miles away, was doing uh, for the past few years with the whole Black Rain defense. Well, uh, for Vandegrift, it's the Black Mamba defense now, with all apologies to Kobe. That was That's that's what they're calling it now. And, and it is. It's a Black Mamba. It has been tough. I remember talking to you last week about how they're going to need a really good defensive performance from guys like Jax McCauley, their junior linebacker, at 15 and a half tackles in the win over Cedar Ridge. Well, the acknowledged leader of their defense, or senior linebacker, Spencer Jones, said, I'll see your 15 and a half and raise you a half as a tackle. He got 16 tackles last week. Their, their defense is doing that, and Drew Dawson, their quarterback, mm-hmm. has stepped in. That was a, a definite question mark going into the season. We knew Isaiah Smallwood was a proven commodity at running back. Well, what about the quarterbacks today? Dawson has proved that, and that's a big reason why Vandegrift has played so well. So then let's matriculate now forward from week four to week five. We are uh, uh, on the cusp of it, about to have another big week of Texas high school football. Um, I first want to ask you about uh, which game or games particularly tickle your fancy um, that, you know, on Friday night you won't be with us, so you'll kind of have your, your choice to, to pay attention to whatever games you want. Which ones are you going to be most locked into? I, I, I like when you give me the choices, when you tell me I can only choose A <laughs> or B. Those are, those are good. Those are the good – those are the good dilemma choices there. I mean, you know, there's there's plenty of there's I, you know, in in the funny thing is, in the greater Austin and Central Texas area, the, I, I just said this on my show a little while ago. It's kind of a down week. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's not a great the, the the most compelling game probably, and this is why we say down week. When we think of of blockbuster weeks of high school games, we think of 
state-ranked teams or teams that are expected to contend for a district title battling. And we're going to see that coming up with Lake Travis and Westlake. We're going to see that uh, with, with Hutto and Cedar Park. And, and there'll be uh, other games like that. Obviously, Childers and Canadian coming up later in October is going to be incredible. Uh, next week, uh, Glade Water and West Rust is going to be really good. Uh, this week, uh, we're used to saying that. And then when you get uh, a matchup of two teams, it could be a really good game, but they're not going to be probably contending for the district title. Then it falls into that category of, yeah, maybe it's not as good a game. And that's exactly where Stony Point and mm-hmm. Cedar Ridge fall into it now. Cedar Ridge has a loss. Uh, to Hendricks, or I mean, to Vandergrift, as we talked about, and and here's and here's Stony, who's unbeaten, but still kind of an unproven commodity. The running back's good, Tyler Cleveland, and, and I think that's a, it's a good running back matchup, Cleveland for Stony Point and and Deuce Vaughn uh, for Cedar Ridge. But th- th- those two teams could well be battling for the final playoff spot out of thirteen six eight, and that's what we're going to see at, at across the state in a lot of places this week is the fight for teams. The, the middle of the pack group, so to speak, that are still playoff postseason contenders. We're talking with Craig Way, the Texas High School Football Hall of Famer. One last question for him because he's got to run. He's an important man. Um, okay, I'm going to tell you a game. I don't want your game analysis. I don't want to pick. I don't want you to tell me the keys to the game. I just want your overall reaction to this matchup existing. Amarillo Tascosa <laughs> will play Brownsville Hannah in San Antonio. I want that whole district. I want the <laughs> whole uh, – you and I talked about this on Monday. It's kind of like the, the Texas high school football version of the ACC Big Ten Challenge. <laughs> let's take the Valley and let's pair them against the Basin on Panhandle and let's see how they do. All of those matchups are kind of fun to look at, you know, and, and, and especially – let me say this also, Deb. For two districts, and both of those districts are non-district scheduling challenged because mm-hmm. it's 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 difficult to be able to do that. I think it's a great deal. Mm-hmm. I think it really is. Whether you're playing, uh, some of them are uh, some of them are playing up north, some of them are playing south, and some are playing in between. So uh, I, I like all of it. I like that entire district, all of those matches. Yeah, it's a, the the two six A versus thirty two six A is just one of those. It's a bizarre set of games that. I mean that in the in the most wonderful way. It's so bizarre and odd, and yet I'm going to be so just enamored with all of these games. He's he's Craig Way. He's the Texas High School Football Hall of Famer. Follow him on Twitter at Craig Way One and hear him on the Texas Longhorns IMG Radio Network calling Texas's maybe redemption in Manhattan. <laughs> we'll hope. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> Craig, appreciate your time, my friend. Safe travels, and we'll do this again next week. You got it, Jeff. Take care. 